up YouTube, Jeremiah Hersey here, and welcome back to the next episode where we're going to start talking about relationships. And with the new year coming around, you know, we always think new year, new me. Well, new year, new relationships. And so the relationships that we're going to be talking about today are the relationships with inside of Power BI. This is how our tables communicate with each other. And so in the last video, we have brought some data in. And so we're going to jump right back to where we left off in the last video. If you want to download the PBIX file with everything ready to go, just look in the description section down below and there's a link to download that PBIX file. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in the Power BI desktop and I'm just gonna go over to my modeling view. Once again, we got three views on the left-hand side, the report view, the data view, and the modeling view. The modeling view is gonna allow you to see the tables that you've brought in and any relationships that have been created. Notice that right here, we have a relationship already created between the city table and the sale table where the city is the one side and the sale is the mini side of the relationship. So what this means is that the city table, also known as a dimensional table, so this is known as a dimension highlighted in blue, will be the one side of your relationship. This is ideal for the star schema. The star schema is made up of dimensional tables, as I'm highlighting here in blue, surrounded by a fact table. So this fact table is the mini side of the relationship and it is usually the central table or whatever you're measuring. So in this case, we're measuring sales. If you were measuring invoices or something like that, it would be your fact table. So all the tables that I've highlighted in blue here are known as a dimension table. So the dimension table is gonna be the one side of the relationship, meaning it is unique. So as we're building the relationships between our dimension table and what's known as our fact table, which is this red table here in the middle, we need to find a column that is unique with inside of the dimension table so that it can map correctly to our fact table. So once again, the dimension is the one side of the relationship and is unique. So as we look at the relationships that's already built here, so let's take a look. As I hover over the relationship, you can see that it's built on the city key. Okay, so in the city table, the city key here is what the relationship is built off of. You also have the options to manage the relationships from here at the top. This is a nice little UI that you can use. It allows you to see it a little bit easier. So either way, you can create relationships through the manage relationship UI, or you can just drag and drop with inside of your tables. All right, so notice here, city key between both tables. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna go over to my city table here. So I'm gonna select the city table. I'm gonna go to the data view. And if we look over here at the city key, we can see that this is a unique number. So each one of these numbers represents a specific city. Now, this is unique means that there are no duplicates with inside of the city table. But as we look at our sales table, and I'll just choose one of these here, you're gonna see that there are gonna be multiple entries for this particular item. This is the fact table. This is the mini side of the relationship. So with inside of our city table, there is only one city key of 37949. But inside of our sales table, there could be many different times where that city has purchased a product. So what we're gonna do here is 37949. Let's go ahead and see what city that is. Okay, so 37949. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna filter down to 37949. Let's take a look at what city that's going to be. And notice that it only relates to one city, Amato, Arizona. Okay, so 
This is the idea behind a one-to-many relationship. Inside of your dimension table, it is going to be unique. There is only going to be one item with inside of the table, but inside of the fact table, we can see that there are multiple of that city key. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that filter there. And let's look at our other relationship. So customer, our customer table, has a customer key column and has been mapped to the customer key column in sales. So once again, notice that one-to-many relationship where the one side is unique, the many side there could be duplicates. So one customer can have many different sales, but as those sales look back, it only goes back to one customer that purchased the item. Okay, so let's go take a look at that before we build our other relationships. So I'm gonna go over to my customer table and we can see our customer keys pretty unique here, right? So each number is different. There are no duplicates. And so I'm just gonna pick a random customer key. So notice here, the first one we filtered down was on the city key. Now we can filter down on the customer key. But you can already see here that customer zero has a lot of purchases. So no need to really filter here. We can just look back over to our customer table and see that inside of here, if we filter down to zero, that is a unknown customer. So anything with a customer key of zero is going to be a unknown customer. And so even though there is no customer information, we still have an idea that it is purchased the item was purchased by someone who we don't necessarily know it could be a guest checkout like when you go to check out online and it's a guest checkout and there's no register for it but what our goal is here today is to create a relationship between these other three tables now i'm going to show you several ways to do that so we have to first find our columns and i'm going to use the manage relationship ui just to make it a little bit easier and I'm gonna select the option for new down here. So notice we can see from the sales table, the city key matches to the city table, the city key. So we're gonna match up our tables now. All right, so we know we have the sales table and let's choose the employee. So we have the employee table that's over here, it's a dimension and there is this employee key that we can use. So we're gonna select the employee key from the employee table. Now, the employee is the salesperson in this case, so the naming convention is a little bit different here. So we're gonna map the employee key, the employee is the salesperson. So we're gonna map those together. So I'm gonna select the salesperson key with the employee key. Notice the cardinality here. So the cardinality is the direction of the relationship and the type that it is. So this is a many to one relationship. This is ideal for the star schema where your dimension table is the one side and the many side of the relationship is the fact table. Our fact table came first, our sales table, which is why the word many showed up. If we were to flip this, Okay, let me just show you here. So if I flip this and this goes to employee and this goes to sales, and I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? I'm gonna select the employee key from this table and the salesperson key. Notice that now the cardinality has changed. It's a one to many. This is the same relationship, but it just depends on which table you select first. My fact table is the second table. It is the mini side of the relationship. That is why the cardinality changed. Now you do also have the ability to change the filter direction. We'll talk about that in a different video, but for right now, we're just gonna leave that filter direction as single. It's only gonna filter one way. So I'm going to click okay and close. And this will now create a relationship between my employee and my sales table. Notice that it's starting to kind of look like a star schema. Most ideal is the star schema where you have the one to many relationship between your dimension tables and your fact table. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for stock item. This time, I have a stock item key. Let me zoom in here so you can see it. So here's a stock item key in both tables. So this is the other way to create relationship, just drag and drop. So I'm gonna drag the stock item key over to the sales table and this one-to-many relationship is now going to be created. So the last relationship, we're gonna to have to make a choice here. Notice that there are several different dates available inside of my sales table. Invoice date, delivery date, and inside of my date table, I have just the date. So we have to decide which date that we're going to use. And this is really up to you, depending upon what information you're trying to gather. And so I'm just gonna drag the date onto the delivery date key. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag date onto the delivery date key. Once again, my date table is unique. There is one date for every day. Awesome, so we now have our star schema set up, ready to go. This is very important for data modeling, especially inside of Power BI. This is how Power BI is going to read the information. So let's just talk about how this works, okay? How the filtering works. The filtering is based upon this arrow. The arrow, think of it like water flowing through a pipe, it's gonna flow in the direction that the arrow is pointing. So it can flow from the one side to the many side. It cannot flow in the opposite direction. So the stock item is going to filter sales, okay? So what happens here is, I'm gonna go over to my stock item table. So I'm gonna pick a stock item key. I'm just gonna pick this first one here, okay? So stock item key of 163, it's an IT joke mug. All right, so what happens in Power BI is it says, oh, the relationship was built off the stock item key, 163. Then it goes over to the sales table, to the stock item key, and it finds 163. Then it filters down our sales table to only items that have that stock item key, and if you look down here at the bottom, okay, we have 1,014 filter roads, which means there are, that was how many purchases of that specific item that there were. And so as you build your visuals with inside of Power BI, that is what you're going to see. And we'll talk about more as we get into visuals in the following videos. Well, I wanna thank you so much for joining me in this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but relationships are extremely important inside of Power BI. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.